Alright, welcome to the map reading lesson for Sec 1 2020. So today to accompany today's lesson you will need the copy of your handout which has the map of Jurong Estate. Okay, uh, your map is slightly different from mine, but you need to have that with you. On the other side you would see three questions. Okay, so please make sure you have these two items with you. Right, the first question of course is what are the difference between the map in slide one and slide two? So um, the map in slide two is with you, right? Your map is the map in slide two. So I'm going to bring back slide one and let's do an analysis. Let me take a look at my map here. My map is a map of Jurong Estate. There are very little markings on it. There are a lot of symbols. They're all over the place, but you do not have uh, any sort of explanation for what the symbols actually represent. So what you see is actually uh, only one symbol that represents the lake. Uh, the other things is your guess is as good as mine. Now actually, um, between your map and mine, right, between slide 1 and slide 2, the key differences are, uh, the, the most stark difference here is the presence of grid lines. Okay, so you see the horizontal and vertical lines that stretch all across your map here, right, these are called grid lines, they provide you uh, eastings and northings, okay, coordinates that you can put together and form 4 digit grid reference. Second important thing that is uh, present in the topographical map and not in the tourist map is a full legend, right? So if you take a look at your map, you will see legend with symbols for most of the items that are on the map itself. And lastly, of course, on the bottom right hand corner, you will see a north arrow indicating where north is on the map itself. So it allows you to do a lot more um, geographical analysis and present more geographical data. Now let's take a look at how we locate grid squares, okay? A four-digit grid reference or four-digit number. What you need to give grid square location coordinates are your eastings and northings. Now, eastings are the numbers at the bottom or occasionally at the top of the map. They increase as you move towards the east. Most of the time that's towards the right hand side of the map. Northings are the numbers on the sides. The northings will be increasing as they move towards the north. So if you take a look at the map that you have, Easting start from 08 and ends at 15, Northing start from 10 and ends at 50. So to look and to locate your 4 digit grid reference, uh, I want to bring in this concept of a right hand rule. Right hand rule simply refers to the things you see on the right hand side of the map here. Okay, The right hand rule, three words in the box, below it you have the arrow pointing to the right, that's the direction of your right hand. If you're going to raise your right hand, right, your hand actually goes along the bottom to the right and then it goes up. Subsequently, you will be at an intersection point between uh, four boxes, right, four grid squares. How do you decide which grid square contains the information you're looking at? It's the top right hand one, because you've just raised the right hand. So, bottom, upwards, and then top right hand box. That's how you use the four digit grid reference to locate a grid square. Let's take a look at an example. Okay, uh, which one of these two four digit grid reference will you be able to find site A in? Okay, is it 0920 or 1130? So let's take a look at 1130 first. So locate the number at the bottom. Okay, the easting that shows 11. Okay, that is a vertical line. Okay, vertical line if you follow the vertical line upwards look for it when it intersects the horizontal line that represents 30. at that intersection you will see uh, four grid squares you're looking at the one at the top right hand corner okay there's an indication of an x inside and that is site b so site a let's check the other set of grid references 0920 look for the one that says 09 Okay, move it upwards and wait, look for the intersection point with the east uh, northern 20. Once you found the intersection, right, top right hand corner, and you will see that site A is in the grid square 0920. Right, so that's your basic introduction to how to find grid squares. Next up, I need you to try for the three questions in the green box. What is in 1140? Which condominium is in 0820? And finally, which condominium is in 1430? Take some time, write down your answers, pause the video, 
and when you're done come back to the video okay welcome back so for the first one what is in grid square 1140 right we look for the easting 11 and then we look for the intersection point with the northern 40 and top right hand corner you will see that Canadian International School is in grid square 1140 Second question, which condominium is in grid square 0820? Now you look at 0808, the line is actually missing, but it's actually the edge of the map, right? So 08 is the start at the leftmost of the map, okay, the westernmost side. If you move upwards, intersection with 0 with 20, you'll notice at this point here, you're not looking at four squares, you only have two squares. So same thing, top right hand corner, and you will see the lakefront residences is the condominium inside this grid square. And lastly, which condominium is in 1430, right? You look for the, once again, the easting line 14. Look for the intersection point with Northern 30. And top right hand corner, you will see Park Oasis inside 1430. So the condominium in 1430 is Park Oasis. Okay, so if you are still a little confused, right? Play back the video to the start of uh, the four digit grid reference. And walk through with me once again the four examples you should get a better understanding now the second skill set we're going to look at is um direction using directional references right so for this you need to know your cardinal directions which you learn in primary school right north south east and west uh, you also need to know where's the source and where's the destination so in this particular case here let's take a look using the example in the first blue box we want to know the direction of site A from B. Now, the from tells you where your origin is, okay? Origin is. The other one, site A, is your destination. So where are you standing? You're standing at your origin, which is at site B. So to locate site B, you need to find the grid square 1130, right? You will find site B. Imagine you're standing in the middle of the X, and you want to know the direction of site A from site B, right? If it is on the west, it will be uh, directly parallel to the easting, to the northern line 30, but it isn't, it's actually below it. So you're looking at it in the southwest direction. So site A, the direction of site A from site B is in the southwest direction. Second one, site B from site A, now we're doing the reverse. Okay, we're doing the reverse, now we are standing at site A, we're looking towards site B. Site B is in the northeast direction. Not east, huh? east will be along once again, a parallel to the northern line 30, but it's not, it's actually slightly above, so it's the northeast direction. Lastly, let's take a look at part where is from Esso Jurong East Petrol Station. So where is the Jurong East Petrol Station? It is in grid square 1340. Okay, it's not the food court. Okay, check against the legend, it's the petrol station. Right, so we are standing at the petrol station. We're going to look at Park Oasis. Park Oasis is not in the south, not in the east. It's in between, so it's southeast. So for directional references, it's important to know where the origin is. Normally, when the question says something, something from something, something else, the from location is your origin, is where you're standing and where you take the reference from. Okay, if you're unclear, once again, pause, return to the start of the direction reference um, section of the video and go through the three examples again. Finally, we're going to look at recognizing symbols from legends and maps. So what you see here is actually I've mapped out for you what I, where some of these symbols are found. Okay, I've mapped out the easy ones, of course. So I've actually indicated where the schools are. Okay, so the, the little circle with that funny looking hat thingy that you wear when you graduate from kindergarten, right? That is the, where schools are located. Similarly, if I'm looking for food courts, I will be looking for the, the symbol with the fork and spoon. Okay, and if I'm looking for a gas station or a petrol kiosk, I will be looking at the one with the petrol pump. Okay, and what about the other things on the map itself then? Uh, other in things that are included include um, MRT stations, okay, which the arrow is in green point out to you. And lastly, bus stops. Now there are too many bus stops for me to draw arrows, it will cover the entire screen, so I have chosen to leave it out. For now, 
could you kindly pause the video and using a ruler and a pencil right can you mark out the arrows that I have drawn for you onto your map itself so this is how you use your legend so I hope that with this uh, very short video, you now know the difference between the two types of maps, the key differences between uh, a normal map, a tourist map, and a topographical map. Um, you hopefully are now aware that a topographical map makes it a lot easier for you to understand the location more accurately, and also make geographical decisions in terms of description of direction, identification of locations, so in terms of uh, in the learning of geography, we are always going to be preferring to use a topographical map. So that's important. Okay, so we've come to the end of this unit. Good luck.